Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, another thing, he don't look like it, but he also legalized recreational marijuana in, in Minnesota. And he, you know what he looks like? He looks like an old hippie that turned up back in the 70s. Yeah. Has calmed down. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? We all get older. So we all are different versions of ourselves as we age. It's a, which, it's a lot of dynamics at play for what he does. Right. Which might be a really good look in terms of changing what cannabis is uh, as a, you know, as well, it's been reduced from the Schedule One drug, but what does it look like fed federally? So that would be very interesting. Give me the weed, good ganja weed. <laughs> give me the weed. Hey, 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 hey. hey. give me that weed. <laughs> good ganja <God>, weed. <laughs> Let's embark on the Ark Republic to hear current news that's published. More than gossip and chatter, covering current affairs that matter. We talk issues with professional views, all keeping you in queue. We wanted a higher vibe for these days and times, the free the voices and minds, reporting the sign of the times, so all can build, let's shine, yeah. Greetings, greetings, wherever you are in the world. And we are fresh off the press with breaking news with Dame Crawford of Uncouth Radio. What's up? What's going on? Uh, yeah, breaking news. Uh, VP Harris has picked her VP uh, for the ticket and it is going to be Tim Walsh. Walsh to the Walsh, 2024. Walsh to the Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, that might be the most flavorful thing about him. But tell me about your thoughts about this pick. All right. So when I first got the pick, I was a little disappointed, to be honest, because I thought it was going to be Shapiro because I thought Shapiro was a really dynamic speaker. I thought Shapiro would deliver <clears throat> Pennsylvania, a swing state that probably would have basically given her the race. Um, but, you know, Democrats like to make things hard for themselves. <laughs> so. They didn't go with Shapiro, but um, the more I thought about it, I know that the youth vote is huge to them this go round. Mm -hmm. I know that they're really going after that 18 to 34. And the 18 to 34, especially the young people of color, are really not on board with, um, I guess, what you would call the tra traditional Zionists in regards to their views on Gaza. Right. And Shapiro was very, very, you know, boisterous about his support of Israel. Right. And and it's funny because I think and I'm not sure, but from what I've read so far, I think Tim Walls has the same views as Shapiro, but I think he's a little less vocal about it. So it's, it's not the same optics. Right. Like you'll get those people who have been like, oh, you pick Shapiro and he's for Israel and he doesn't want to free Palestine. We're not voting because you have a lot of one issue voters in that age range, right? Who were really, because they were, and I don't know if you recall, they were really on Biden. That was one of the things that dropped Biden immensely with the youth vote was his handling of Israel and Palestine. So I think that's why they couldn't use Shapiro on a ticket. And I think they were trying to be measured in how, you know, who they picked to run with her because such a small window of error for her in regards to who her pick is. And um, Tim Walls, like I think before three weeks ago, nobody nationally really knew who he was, right? But um, he's become like a rising star on CNN and Fox and all the, because he's the one who coined Donald Trump weird and, and, and coined the Republicans weird. And he's been kind of like blazing the mic on, uh, you know, a bunch of, the the political shows that have been coming up and like you said before the show you know i think that's one of nancy pelosi's pick i think her main pick i think she really wanted kelly from arizona because she spoke about him first but just recently she started speaking about tim walls um but i think tim walls it's funny he's kind of like a trojan horse right he's like he looks like a moderate he looks like a moderate like you said a bagel like he looks like a super <laughs> <laughs> plain one super you know, plain yeah. you know not even no locks on it like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he looks super plain but looking into his record he's actually very progressive so that's going to be interesting to see how they because I, I i thought they would pick somebody like kelly or shapiro to balance out the ticket as well because both of those guys are a little more moderate right um and a little but even though Tim looks like the moderate, like he looks the part. He really does. He looks the part. 
some of his views, you know, he's the one who took the George Floyd case out of the hands of uh, his department and gave it to the Department of Justice. He's the one who did uh, free tuition for low income families for college, uh, free lunch for all elementary school kids. He's pro abortion. He's pro IVF. He said his child was born from IVF, which I'm like, OK, that's a part of the story. They like, you know, that's going to help with with the, the, the pro abortion. Um, so I think he appeals to middle America still while having progressive views, which I like. But I don't know how much middle America is going to like how progressive he is. But it's going to be interesting to see how Donald Trump tries to attack him because Donald Trump dropped a, a press release as soon as he found out. And again, another miss, right? Like his attack was, oh, he's a West Coast wannabe. He's trying to make Minnesota Golden State. He's trying to make he, he's a, a far left. You know, he's far left, farther left than Kamala even. And. He's, like, you know, and he said um, he's trying to let felons vote. Why would you even put that in the press release? Because you're a felon, because now it's going to bring attention to the fact, because everybody's like, you have a problem with felons voting while you're a felon. You know what I mean? So another miss for, for the Donald Trump campaign on this. So it's going to be interesting to see how they try to attack him. Um, like I said, I know he's been progressive, but the things you would try to attack him on, you want to attack him on, you know, free college tuition. You're going to attack them on free lunch for kids. You know, you're going to attack them on, oh, I think he was one of the first ones who did paid leave. Paid family leave is in, it's happening in Minnesota right now. So you're going to attack them on paid family leave. So a lot of the things that he got passed in Minnesota support are wildly popular nationally. So I guess if he leans into those things, it could help the ticket. That's what I see so far. But on the other hand, of course, they're going to say he's, you know, the, the Republicans, because I, I see some of the Republicans are happy because I think they were really scared of Shapiro. Because like I said, I feel like Shapiro would have delivered the race, but they were scared of Shapiro. Um, they are happy that she picked Walls because they feel like he's not going to because we already would have won in Minnesota anyway. Right. Like the Democrats would have won Minnesota. So it's not like he's delivering a swing state like uh, Shapiro or a Kelly. So I don't know. It's, it's interesting the strategy but again like i said for me i think the biggest issue was shapiro's stance on israel and i think that's the thing that might have knocked them out of the running right that's uh you make some really good points uh <laughs> well we you know outside of the show one of our ongoing jokes was is that this was like the draft pick for the white guys right yeah. and yeah. you know everybody said she needs a white man. I don't think you can get any whiter <laughs> than a Tim Walls. Okay? Any more milk, milk toast. <laughs> he gives so pale, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 I think perhaps the issue with Shapiro, there are sev several things. Uh, the issue with Shapiro is, is that he's such a personality. Harris might deal with the same thing that Vance, that Trump is dealing with Vance. You have, you know, Shapiro then becomes the superstar of the ticket rather than Harris. And you want to have this thing where the presidential candidate is the one that the, the VP candidate is bolstering uh, and alley-ooping and making look good. So, right. you know, Walsh is definitely a great fallback guy. You are correct. Shapiro's stance on Gaza is very problematic for that voter base that you're talking about. Uh, and as well, you are correct. Walt has very similar, most of Congress, let's, let's keep it honest. Right. Right, most right. of Congress back the U S and what they're doing in, um, in, in Gaza uh, right now, or they are not vocal about it. Right. And that is a legislative congressional issue uh, that, will have to be dealt with because the world is basically encroaching on Israel and is not liking what is going on. So that's something that the next president must face, which of course, uh, Sharice, Dr. Sharice and I talk about the possibilities of, you know, a world conflict that will lead to that because it definitely seems like things are aligning to that. Right. But also right. Shapiro was problematic is, is that he when uh, the 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 Black Lives Matter protesters, he described them in very unsavory ways. Uh, was it Black Lives Matter protesters or was it the protesters at the um, UGA? 
but he had no sympathy for protesters. So you have a, a group or um, a right emerging group of younger folk. And also let's say this, it's not just younger people who are critical of what's going on uh, in Israel. There are a lot of people, they won't publicly say it, but you know, who, who have issues with how the United States is handling it. Right. Um, but don't say things so they will not be vilified. Uh, so, um, yeah. So I also wanted to say this is, is that, um, Shapiro, however, I think might be more pivotal as governor in delivering Pennsylvania than as VP. Mm. Uh, Pennsylvania is, you know, Pennsylvania was, is one of those swing states that took a huge hit. It has a lot of labor issues. It's really trying to work out some things. Uh, so I think maybe right now he'll be best and maybe they're propping him to be the next, next dim presidential candidate. Candidate. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Maybe along mm. with the Gavin Newsom, but Shapiro Ooh, that'd is- That'd be a cold ticket right there. That'd be a cold ticket. <laughs> that'd but, be a cold but, ticket. <laughs> but um, Gavin Newsom, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry again. Shapiro is also Jewish. So yes. Sharice and I talked about too many quote unquote identities on the ticket might 100%, be- A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And a lot like, of people don't consider a Jewish person quote unquote, fully white. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and, and every Jewish person is not white. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, yeah. And you know, you make a really good point too, um, because we do like, like we do have to look at the ticket in regards to the identity politics, right? In a perfect world, you know, you probably could have had maybe two women, you know what I'm saying? In the perfect world, you could have had Pete Buttigieg, a gay man, you know, but you like, we know this country is going to be like, all right, we might be able to take a black woman, but we're gonna take a black woman and a white woman. We're gonna take a black woman and a gay dude. It's like it's all like too much progression too fast. You understand what I'm saying? And a because black woman who's married to a Jewish man and then have a Jewish man as her VP candidate. That's yeah. a little much for a lot of people. No, no, it really is. And we have to talk about the reality of that, right? And like you said, Tim filled the white man draft. He feels he feels it perfectly. And also. I think Tim is kind of like it's kind of like a reverse Biden, like how they put Biden on a ticket with Obama. I think it's the same thing, right? Like they putting him on a ticket because he has those coalitions. Like I feel like he will have the coalition that a lot of those Biden voters have, right? Like he's real strong in labor, he's real strong on the economy, and he's got those labor unions on his side. So he got some of those. Oh, what well, you would say the old school endorsements that you know. VP Harris probably doesn't have, or they're probably not enthusiastic about her at this point. I think he can bring some of those parts of that coalition back, you know, in into voting. Right. And let me say this, but I, I don't, I have to do more of a deep dive, dive into Waltz and his record. I am on the fence in terms of Pelosi coming out and uh, basically knighting him. Uh, Pelosi is part of the old guard and a lot of people are like, I know that's one of the criticisms that I have is, is that the old guard needs to step aside and Nancy Pelosi just need to go, go somewhere. Like, you know, her putting that on there was kind of like an ego thing for me that I read, you know, as just, you know, fall back. Like you still trying to be the kingmaker and, you know, and you step to fully step aside and allow, allow this process to happen. That might be a ding because they're, they're like, oh, okay, well, she, Walsh might be a proxy for some old guard, uh, right. older established Democrats. So, I mean, that's just my initial kind of take. Uh, but I think announcing uh, the Democrats announcing their VP is the same every four years. Everybody's like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> every time. Like, Every why time. they do that there? Uh, uh, that is... Yeah, I think the last one that actually made sense was Biden with mm -hmm. Barack. That was the last one. That, but like you said, every time. Like, who, do we even remember the guy that Hillary was running with? Oh, who was it? it? I forgot. <laughs> so forgettable. He was forgettable while the election was going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I guess you have to be comfortable with being forgettable. You know, right. Well, well, I will say I think Tim was so watching some of his press conferences and stuff. I think he is a good choice in regards to like I've seen him doing 
press conferences and like a t-shirt and a baseball cap. You know what I mean? Like he's he's giving salt to the earth, salt of the earth to mm -hmm. that middle America. And then I've seen him in suits and stuff. But it's funny because it's like he goes between old regular white man and you know a white man with some spice. He you know what I mean? Like he he goes between those two. So I, cool I think granddad, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the cool granddad. Grand okay. Yep, mm -hmm. Exactly. And but I think honestly, I think he will wipe the floor with Vance when they have the vice president. Oh, I want to see debate. this debate. I want to see the debate. Now, now I I my hope is is that um, you know, because I'm all I'm I'm like I've said I enjoy politics because it is the best theater you know, that, that around. So I really, uh, I really hope that there is a very robust debate. Thinking of Vance, Vance has already put out his campaign tour and it's mocking the Kamala Harris tour. So Harris is going to Philly, Vance is going to Philly. So this is a really interesting st strategy by the Republican party. I guess they're trying to see how they're going to fare in these swing, swing states right. or these state or what happens after Harris leaves, what the numbers look like after a, a, after a Vance leaves, um, Waltz also, I, I have to I have to listen I have to listen to him. But another thing is is that he's pro labor uh, too as well. He's a former teacher, so he's very accessible. He worked he was in the military for some time, so he checks a lot of boxes. A it's lot of boxes. The <laughs> optics of like it's like somebody. <laughs> He looked like everybody and nobody at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's just, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't, but see, I don't know if this, but this is for me, this this race signifies that you got to hold your own. So as mm -hmm. much as Walsh represents this non-threatening white man, can we, I mean, this is actually a term I'm going to have to use for Waltz. Right. Um, Harris still has to, she still has to bloom more if she wants to be as such a kind of huge personality as Trump. She doesn't have to be a Trump, but she's got to ascend in this because the support and the fervor, as you said, behind her is not going to be enough. She really got to come into, continue to come more into her own, whatever that looks like. Well, I think her first couple of sit-down interviews, she has to knock it out the park. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because now everybody's like when she's going to do a sit down interview when she's going to talk to the people when she's going to lay out her plan you know outside of scripted speeches you know and um so i think that's going to be a huge part because i think that's like the final piece of her presenting herself is when she sits down and she really starts talking through her agenda starts talking through what her presidency looks like when she starts differentiating her presidency from Biden's, like what are the things that she's going to kind of keep and what are the things that she's going to do differently? Because I know she's been a little more vocal in regards to saying ceasefire than Biden ever was, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the time where you're going to see her define herself. She has to do it quickly before the Republicans get to define her. They're trying, but luckily they can't figure out. So they're like flailing and flopping against her, but it's now it's going to be time for her to come out. She needs to come out and define herself as a candidate, apart from being uh, Biden's vice president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be, this is, this is going to be very interesting. I think there's a lot of growth on both sides. I'm glad you mentioned that one of our listeners um, uh, said, hey, I went to the Harris uh, thing and I didn't see much. That didn't have a lot of teeth on it too. Uh, so I went there. I said, oh yes, you're right. Um, so, so. I don't know if this is because Waltz has not entered in, but um, like I said, there there is a lot that must be done in in very little time. Uh, not to make this a long podcast because we just wanted to jump on and give our initial thoughts about uh, Waltz be, uh, being the VP presidential candidate for the presidential candidate uh, Kamala Harris. What are your final thoughts on this? Oh, my final thoughts are it's going to be a very close race, I think, to the very end. Um, I think Walt will bolster her a little bit in. Um, he will bolster her a little bit in the um, what they call it, the blue wall. He'll he'll bolster her a little bit in the blue wall. And, you know, one of the things that I've seen is they said uh, Biden only had basically like one path to winning, which was he had to get the Sun Belt. 
Um, but I'm seeing that uh, they're saying VP Harris, she has a chance to get the blue wall and a lot of the Sun Belt. So she actually has a couple of paths to win this thing. So um, what is the Sun Belt for those of us who oh, I think the Sun Belt the is like, belt, but the sun yeah, belt. Sun belt is like Arizona. Oh, OK. Uh, Florida. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like ne that's right. Nevada. Ne Nevada. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. so, so they said she actually could have a path there as well. So what I like, like I said, when she first became the nominee, well, now she's officially nominee. But when I when when, you know, one of our, the first shows that we did, I said strategy is going to be very key and very important to her going forward. Like she cannot make a mistake. So strategically, they have to play this thing damn near perfectly in order to pull the votes in. Um, like I know uh, they said Biden had 75 percent of the black vote his it had dropped drastically but now i think she's back up to 83 but even though she's back up to 83 percent of the black vote that's still like seven percent lower than when they were voted in as president and vice president so there's still work to do there um there's going to be work to do with the white male you know constituency of america because you're going to need some of them you have you know there's just no way around that um there's going to be work to do with with uh white women you know there are certain inroads she's to make and 18 to 34 is going to be key for her you know because i think that can be the 18 to 34 can replace a lot of what she would miss with the white populist vote that biden got right um and you know what's interesting this is an interesting stat and and it kind of explains why you know before we get out of here it explains why trump is trying to go so hard for the young and the black vote so trump's biggest base when he won was baby boomers. Do you know what happened between the last time he won with baby boomers and now? Either a lot of them died or a lot of them are broke or a combination. 20 million died. Whoa. 20 million baby boomers have died between the time he won and now. And that was a huge part of Trump's base were those older white baby boomers. So people aren't talking about this, but there's a large chunk of his base that is literally gone. Wow. That that made me, you know, sit sit really quietly, you know, because that can change. So not only do you have this huge, but but you have a wealth, this wealth transfer. So I'm interested to see what the wealth transfer transfer with the baby boomers who passed, what type of voter that created, mm -hmm. right? Um, because what some of the reports are talking about how you have these younger conservative voters that are emerging. Um, but also I was somewhere and it was, it was, it was, I was walking by somewhere. It was a cafe. I was in a, actually I was in a cafe in LA. As a matter of fact, over there by the airport, uh, over there, <laughs> a coffee company, as a matter of fact. I don't know if you've ever been there. Yes, I but have. It ha you I have. have. Right. So it has that sign, and the sign said, you know, be patient. There's a shortage in wait staff. The world has changed, something like that. So there's just a lot of significant changes that have happened in the labor force. So mm -hmm. the fact that, I know I said you have the last word, but the fact that Waltz, who has is ranked uh, Wisconsin, sorry, yeah, Wisconsin is ranked number 11 in terms of uh, employment rate might bring some, maybe some interesting uh, conversation around what that looks like and what an economic development it is rebuilding this labor market when, when there has been a significant number of people to, to drop out. Um, of it, you know, even though theoretically baby boomers are supposed to have already been retired, well, we know a lot of people still working. Absolutely. So, um, wow. So we have uh, we have JD Vance. We got to give him a name, and we have balls to the walls. Uh, evil I, Care Bear. I, oh, Care Bear. <laughs> evil the evil Care Bear. The evil Care Bear. But I I do like balls to the walls. Balls and to I the walls. Know, yeah. If they and I'm gonna tell you if they use that, you know they jack that from us. Okay, or from <laughs> right. you. Forget that right. from, from, from you. Thank you for tuning in to Arc Republic's news podcast. We are a small media organization with big news energy and cover topics from a global lens and work to uncover rich and robust stories. Any contribution towards our operation will fuel a much needed media revolution. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, another thing, he don't look like it, but he also legalized recreational marijuana in, in Minnesota.
And he, you know what he looks like? He looks like an old hippie that turned up back in the 70s. Yeah. Has calmed down. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? We all get older. So we all are different versions of ourselves as we age. It's a, which, it's a lot of dynamics that play for what he does. Right. Which might be a really good look in terms of changing what cannabis is uh, as a, you know, as. Well, it's been reduced from the Schedule One drug, but what does it look like fed federally? So that would be very interesting. Give me the weed, good ganja weed. <laughs> give me the weed. Hey, ganja, hey, 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 give me the weed. <laughs> good ganja weed. <laughs> look, balls to the walls. Okay, you know he he he's one of them. You 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 know you've been in many a club. It'd be that little old white guy in the cut. You know what I'm yep, saying? Yep. Yeah, that, don't that. let do you popping out on people. But anyway. <laughs> So, so in in this, let me sober back up, but because this is, you know, a very serious moment, but you know, just black people, we give folk flavor. Okay. Of course, we, absolutely. We, we're giving folk flavor, but this is going to be really interesting. I have to say this and your thoughts um, on this. Usually traditionally vice presidents do not play a significant role in presidential campaigns. Do you think that a Vance Walsh Vance versus Walsh or whatever, Walsh versus Vance. Do you think that is going to change? Or is this the Democrats' attempt to kind of tamper down the personality or the celebrity of Vance as vice president pick? You know what? I for think the, it's for the Republicans. Think, yeah, yeah. I think it's a little bit of that, but I also think if you look at it, Walls is literally the anti-Vance. Right? He's literally like the anecdote to Vance. And I think. They wanted somebody, like I said, who could have mic drop moments. We know he can do that. You know, they wanted somebody who could go up against him. So when he's talking about reproductive and he really has a story in regard to his daughter, Hope, being born through IVF. You know what I mean? So I think they wanted somebody that could actually put, because Vance has been hurting Trump. Oh, I get it with the IVF, with the childless cat lady. So he, yes. yes. Oh, got you. So he could be like the childless cat daddy. Exactly. Like I was the childless cat daddy if he uh, went out for IVF. Okay. Yes. Yes. So what I'm saying, like he, they literally building in a story that can specifically go up, like he's specifically made to go up against JD Vance. Right. Um, and I think Vance has made the vice president a little more like how you said it's usually not consequential well with him actually hurting the campaign they probably want to use walls to continue to magnify jd to continue like yeah keep talking keep saying stuff keep trying to come at me keep trying to fight me because the more he talks the more he actually has been hurting the campaign Exactly. All right, then, Dame, until next time, thank you so much for jumping on the call at the, uh, at the hot breaking news minute. I'll talk to you later. All right. See you later.